What's up guys? Today we are working on this CDU XP again. Um, and all of a sudden we're not getting spark. So I went out and I looked on YouTube and I said I searched like CDU XP ignition system, CDU ignition system, jet ski ignition system, and wasn't finding anything. So I decided to make this video because I can't find anything on YouTube, so I figured you guys can't either. And I want you guys to have a resource to go to for the ignition systems on a jet ski. Though this video is for the c XP here, um, a lot of your ignition systems will be very similar to this. So if you have no spark, you have come to the right place because we're going to be diagnosing all the parts of the ignition system here. And you can see I printed out the manual. If you have, if your engine's not cranking over or you're having other electrical issues, then I made another video for that and I'll put that up in the top right corner. So here is our different systems. So the first one is the rotor, this guy here. The second one is the trigger coil, which basically sends a signal each time the rotor comes around 180 degrees to send spark to one of the cylinders. The third one is our MPM which is this module here, and it's basically the computer of your jet ski. Um, and then the spark will come through your DC CDI module, and that will send the signal to the spark to um, your holder relay and then your ignition coil here. So we're gonna test all of these components, and I'm gonna show you what to look for. And yeah, let's get into it. For about all these tests, you're gonna need a multimeter, um, I love this multimeter here. It's a, it's an auto ranging multimeter. So it's similar to like a fluke and I think it works just as good, but I got it for a fraction of a price of a fluke. So I will see if I can find this thing. I bought it a couple years ago and I'll put it in the description if I can. And all the other tools I use in this video, if I use any other special tools will be in the description. All right, we're here at the battery. And before you guys even start watching this video and diagnosing your electrical components, make sure your black wire is plugged, the smaller black wire is plugged into the negative post and then follow it up and make sure it, this is it up here, and make sure it is connected to your coil pack up front under this screw here. If it is not, you will not be getting spark and none of your components are probably out. It's just because your black wire is not getting there. All right, so we're gonna start off and this is gonna, we're gonna trace that black wire and it's a good idea to make sure that that black wire is not frayed at all. So we're gonna do a continuity setting. So that's just the speaker on your multimeter. And when you touch your leads together, you should get a noise. If you get a noise, you know it's working. And then we're gonna take this guy here, which is where the wire comes from. And then I'll attach this other end to the battery. To where that wire connects to the battery. And I'm getting a noise. So I know I have continuity. I kind of have to move this guy around on here, which tells me there's a lot of corrosion on it. So if you're getting corrosion on these, you should probably clean them up. That could be part of the culprit on all these wires here. I'm gonna show you guys how I do that later in the video and I'm gonna test some other components first though. All right, so the first thing on the ignition system, the first thing on the ignition system is the rotor and this thing's really hard to film, but you're not gonna notice a whole lot with the rotor as long as it's not cracked or super dirty, you're probably not having an issue with it. This protrusion here that you could see that sticks out of it, that's what goes by your trigger coil and creates spark. But you want to clean this guy off because it'll wear out your other components over time if there's dirt on it. And other than that, just make sure there's no major cracks and you should be good with the rotor. Now the second thing on our list is the trigger coil. So the trigger coil is right here and I pulled our stator and trigger coil off of the engine. This is kind of a hard and tedious process to pull off, but to really get, you're going to test it through this connector here and you can do it with it still on, but I pulled it off for demonstration purposes. Um, what you're going to do to pull it off is just remove these, I think there's about 
10, 10 millimeter bolts that go around it. All the other ones are pretty easy if you use a quarter inch ratchet and an extension, but the last two are kind of hard. So you're gonna have to remove your engine mounting bolt from the front, which isn't that hard, it's just two bolts. And then you'll lift it up. And I used a ratchet strap to hold it up. That allowed me to get to the bottom two bolts because they were just really hard to get to. And as you can see, I connected the ratchet strap to the back of the trailer. You don't want to ratchet it down too tight, just enough to hold that engine up there. The trigger coil can be a common issue as to why you're not getting spark on the XPs. So what you're going to want to do is test the two wires that come from it. You can see there's a yellow and a black wire and they come up through here and go into your, they come up and go into your connector here. So we're going to go to the other side of the connector and do an ohms reading test on them. According to the SIDU manufacturer specifications for this 96 XP, the reading should be between 190 and 300 ohms. And we're going to test the white wire, or that's, you can test the white wire and black slash yellow wire. If your connector was plugged in, ours is not, so we're just going to go with what's coming out of the trigger coil. You'll get the same reading either way. I do want you guys to note though, if you do not have this ski, your readings will be probably a little bit different. So check your manufacturer specifications so you know your correct readings that you're supposed to get. So you're gonna put your multimeter back on an ohm setting and then stick your two test leads into here and touch the two prongs that come out of your trigger coil. Now, if you look at the multimeter, we're getting 240.4 ohms, which is within the specification. So we know that this trigger coil checks out. Well, I have this out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it as well because there's some dirt in it. And then I'm gonna test the stator here just to make sure that's functioning. If you trace your stator wiring, it comes up and there's these three wires here that come from the stator, these three yellow wires, and we're gonna do an ohms test on all three of these. All right, so the stator comes out to these three wires, and according to SIDU, the ohm reading between them should all be close to zero. You just wanna to look to make sure you don't get a short to ground. All right, for this one, I'm getting about 0.6. I'm going to check it to this guy, the other outside one. I'm getting, getting about 0.6 again there. And I'm going to check these two. So you want to check all the combinations. I'm getting about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 for that one. So you want to make sure they're all kind of consistent and close to zero. And that's how you know that your stator checks out. Okay, so I've tested everything on this cover and that I need to, so I can clean that off and put it back into the engine. Theoretically, this is kind of a hard job to get this out, so you probably wouldn't want to start with this, but I did just because that was the order that was on the manufacturer's specifications, and I wanted to make a good video for you guys so you guys could see how to do everything. Now we're going to look at that MPM. Uh, it's this guy right here. Um, Basically, if your ski lights up when you press the start-stop button, or if your ski cranks over, or if you get the two beeps when plugging your key in, then you know your MPM is good. If you're still not 100% sure though if your MPM is functioning all the way, there is some tests, um, and I'll show you guys what to do for those tests, but they're not necessary if your ski is lighting up in my opinion. As far as the CDI, if you pretty much know it's bad if all everything else is working or you try out another CDI and it works with that, that's the only way you can really test it. There is some ohm testing, but I found if even if all the ohm testings come out right, doesn't mean that the CDI is functioning. So this is your CDI module right here, and this is your MPM, this longer one. Um, there is a few tests that they can give you. And I have those printed out, so I could, I'll flash them on the video, so if you guys want to take a picture of them, just in case you want to test them. But I'm not going to test them because I flipped it out for a new one that I got on eBay. That's what I usually do for these CDIs. I just buy one, the cheapest one I could find on eBay, 
and if it fixes the problem then I keep it and if it doesn't then I just put it up there for a little more than I got it for all right here's the chart for the MPEM if you guys just want to take a picture these are the readings you should get if you test it you can also find this on your manufacturer specifications but this is for 96 c 2 xp like i said though if it starts up or if your ski lights up your npm's probably in good condition one thing i should have mentioned earlier that's on the easier side is check all your fuses there's two in this rear electrical box and three up front on the ski in that other one i showed you check them all sometimes one of them can go out and that'll cause your ski to not start or not get spark. All right, so we've tested the first four, now we're onto the holder relay. Okay, in our service manual for the holder relay verification, it says disconnect the purple and blue, and black wires coming out of the holder relay, connect meter leads to the above wires, and resistance of holding coil should be 104 ohms, plus or minus about 10 ohms. This is our holder relay here, and we're gonna disconnect our purple and blue wire from its connector here and then also this black wire from the ground connection. I already undid it, but it was right here. It's just a nut that holds it on. All right, so I'm gonna disconnect the purple and blue wire. There we go. And then take our black wire from our ground over here. Okay, and then I take the end coming from the holder relay, be the male end of your purple blue wire, and then I take this end, and I should be getting a reading on the multimeter around 104 volts. I mean 104 ohms, sorry. So we're getting 102.7, so that's within spec, so we know our holder relay checks out. All right, now the last thing that we need to check is the ignition coil. Um, a way to make sure you're getting power to the ignition coil is to test this white wire with a test light as you crank over your ski. Um, I have the ski to a part, but I will put a test light down in the description and you basically just ground your test light and then put one end on here. And if you're getting a signal of flashing power, it's going to be dim, but you'll just shade it. And if you can see it, that basically means that you are getting power to your coil, like a signal to your coil. So if you're getting power to the coil, um, and it's not, you're still not getting spark, this is the test they recommend. Um, you take the two female connectors off, and your ohm reading should be 0.34 to 0.62 ohms, so let's check that. Basically what the service manual meant by female or by the connectors here is um, these two guys. So you want to get a good connection on these. Sometimes it can be tough to get a good connection because they'll get a little corroded. So I'm getting a good connection on them now and I'm getting 0 0.6, 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 ohms, which is within the spec of 0 0.3 to 0 0.6. So we know our coil checks out there. Okay, so if you have checked everything and it's still not working, another good thing to check is your spark plug wires here. So you're gonna twist off the cap that holds your spark plug on. And it'll come off of there. And you're gonna do it off both wires. And then c says to do a resistance test between these two wires. So this is the secondary part of your coil. So we're gonna do a resistance test between these two wires. So I'll stick one probe in this wire and one probe in the other. And as you can see, we're getting 12,530 ohms because you can see the K. Um, and basically within spec is nine to 15,000 ohms. So we know we're in spec here and we know that's not the issue. If you are over the spec reading, you don't necessarily need to replace these. You can cut them back about a quarter inch and plug it back on. There's a lot of videos out there on how to do it. If you guys want me to make a video up on this, let me know in the comments and I can do that for you guys.
All right, I said I was gonna show you guys how to clean up this connector that goes bad on the CDI, or the coil pack, sorry. Um, before I do that, I wanna mention that I am doing a build series on these things, so just put a new seat cover on that one. I'm gonna do a lot of cleanup work on it, and also this one, after I get the spark back. I'm gonna make these things look brand new, and if you guys like today's video and learn something from it, definitely subscribe, because I'll have more coming your way. But basically what I do is I take this guy, um, your screw, because it, it's pretty corroded. And I'm just going to soak it in a little solvent in my solvent tank. You can just clean off with some simple green or something. Alright, well I got that guy soaking in the solvent tank. I'm going to take this Dremel tool here and with a little wire brush. I'll put both of these in the description. Um, and then I'm just going to clean up the ends of the connectors with them. All right, now I'm just gonna apply a little bit of dielectric grease to all of my connectors here. This will just help the connectors from not rusting. All right guys, so I got this all back together now. I had to use a different bolt because it was stripped out and I just ran the bolt through and put a nut on the other side of this. It's hard to see, but there's a nut there. And I think that my issue was, since every component was testing good, I think my issue was just not having a clean connection here because my terminals were just a little dirty. So I'm betting that was it. So I'm using my handy little spark tester here. I just put it in the coil wire and then put it to ground and then crank the engine over. And if I see a little spark here, then I know I have spark. All right, and there was a little spark, so I'm going to try and fire it up here. It ran a little boggy at first, but after it started to run really well. 